first onto a host of suggestions and menus for the festive board in the food and drink Christmas special. <laughs> Food and Drinks Christmas Special, the best tasting turkeys and holiday recipes which are challenging the rest of the family to cook. And the finalists of our Radio Times Master Cook competition break Christmas pies with a difference. The winner gets a luxury kitchen. And last week it was fizzy and sweet. This week it's red and white, affordable wine for your Christmas dinner. Hello and welcome to the Food and Drink Christmas Special. Food, drink, and one or two guests you may recognize. And a turkey whom you may also recognize, Chris. <laughs> Has nobody told the man it's Christmas? We have a challenge for you this holiday season. We're calling it Give Her a Break. And the idea is that for one day during the period, the cook, assuming it's mum, gets a day off and lunch and supper are cooked by the rest of the family. Michael will be showing you the recipes later, but I also have some guests here to try them out, Chris. Here's a clue to their identity. Parents, oops. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> some eggshell, there's some eggshell in there. Good, that's a good one. Fine, now, what I'm going to put into that. A bit of seasoning, salt, and uh, weak enough, isn't it? Oh, black pepper. That's right, black pepper. That's black aphrodisiac, pepper. isn't it? Yeah, Can we put a bit more in? I was told <laughs> that you would even sit in, the, in a chair and let her cut cake for you rather than yes, get Yes, I up. couldn't do that. Couldn't I do found it. that very difficult. <laughs> A proud man, Alan Perkins and Will, his son, and Tiffany, Will's wife. You two starred in our film about Birmingham men who'd never cooked before. Indeed, I don't think he's ever cooked again, has he? Uh, not often. <laughs> <laughs> not often. Are you proud of this incompetence? Um, she's such a wonderful cook. Why should I really do anything? This is the attitude that built the empire, you see. That's and lost it very That's <laughs> absolutely right, yes. <laughs> that's okay, that's lunch. Now for dinner and a stir-fry. Testing this out for us, we have another old friend of food and drink. I've had a crafty little taste of the fish, this dish, and the caviar on it, really, I think the caviar spoils it. You think so? Yes, because it, it tastes too salty and tum. I mean, that caviar doesn't do anything to me. Not to you? No. But it no. has to me, John. John Wilcox, the man who had the bottle to tell Anton Mossman he didn't like caviar. A magic moment in television. And Anita, his daughter, and Margaret here. Have you taken up cooking in a serious way? Oh, yes, I do. Quite a bit of cooking. I mean, I've got to because why well, not cook? She's given so, up entirely, oh, has she? I, I cook for all cooking now, you know. A woman of leisure. Yes, well, I look forward aye. to seeing your efforts. OK, guys, it's time to start, so off you go. Meanwhile, Michael's talking turkey. If you haven't yet ordered or bought your turkey, I've got a few ideas for you. 75% of us still buy a frozen turkey, and why not at such good value, about 60 pence a pound? But there are increasingly a number of alternatives, and those alternatives are creeping up on the frozen birds as well. First is a wide choice of what's called free-range birds. They're about 180 to 2 pounds a pound. And I have to say, there are quite a lot of dubious claims made under the heading of free-range, especially on the area of turkeys, where the guidelines are not so strict. But what you are likely to get is a bird which has been allowed a little more freedom, is fed a little more naturally, and perhaps hasn't been de-beaked. I'm delighted to say that also the more traditional bronze turkey is quite widely available this year. I first introduced this kind of turkey in about 1985, and I like its stronger, richer flavour. You're most likely to find turkeys like this at independent butchers, where you can also look out for this. This is what's called a Norfolk Black. It's the old style of turkey that used to be eaten in the 18th century when they walked them down from Norfolk in the autumn with little boots on so their feet didn't wear out. They're slaughtered later in life and they're hung for up to a week afterwards to improve the flavour. And they do let you discover what poultry used to taste like in Bob Cratchit's day. Finally, here's a really good idea from Home Farm. It's a six pound free range chicken that's widely available from butchers and supermarkets. It's about the size that capons used to be. And if there are a smaller number of you or you fancy something other than turkey, it makes a wonderful choice. 
How are the professionals doing over there, Chris? Well, you join us for the turning of the salmon, a pretty tense moment, but it's looking delicious and smelling equally good. Will, whenever he gets into a kitchen, gets frightfully stressful. You can understand that, can't you? He's hit the bottle in rather a <laughs> large way. <laughs> However, things are going swimmingly. And last but not least, the turkey roasting recipe, the crafty one. This is the wonderful way of cooking turkey that leaves it moist, that makes your gravy automatically and leaves you with no washing up to do. The secret is not only the turkey and the roasting tin, but a rack underneath it. Put the turkey on the rack and put into the tin about half a pint of water. It can be a bit more, a bit less, depending on your tin. The idea is not to have the turkey swimming, but to have it moist. And as it cooks, the steam makes sure the turkey is all the way cooked through and is beautifully, beautifully moist. I've seasoned it already, so there's a little lemon juice over the top and a lemon inside to make sure the flavoring goes all the way through. And this is a piece of buttered greaseproof paper, just to make sure the flavor holds in. You put that into the oven for the appropriate length of time per pound at, at about 350 mark for 180 degrees centigrade. And when it's cooked, this is what happens. The turkey's roasted beautifully. It's moist inside as well as browned outside, but the gravy, ha-ha, the gravy has made itself from all that water. You take the rack out, of course, and as you'll notice, the tin's almost clean, virtually no washing up at all. Just what I promised. Well, I must say, Alan, he's cut the, uh, cut the crust a bit chunky. Yes. Well, but it uh, smells wonderful. It looks great. Yes, I was always uh, handicapped by my assistant, but uh, <laughs> it lo it's looking good anyway and smelling very it good, isn't it? It certainly is. Margaret. Yeah. Points out of ten for chopping and preparation. It's quite <laughs> different cooking in a studio than... Uh, preparing things at home. That's for sure, it's yeah. nerve-wracking. Mr. It's Barry will tell yeah. you all about that. <laughs> now we're going to show you what the first course, that's to say the salmon, should look like and how it should be made. And now for the give her a break lunch. It's a very simple meal. It's designed to be cooked by anybody in order to give uh, your mum or if it's a very modern marriage, your partner a break over the holiday. Ingredients, dead simple. It's a three-course meal. We'll come to the other courses in a minute. The main course is salmon steaks cooked with double cream, little lemon juice, and some watercress in the sauce. Wonderful, rich dish. It is Christmas. Very simple to make. Fry the salmon steaks in a little oil and butter, a tablespoonful of each, until, until they're just browning on the outside and are cooked through. You don't want them hard brown. It's a very delicate dish. Chop the watercress finely. If I were to give Will a tip, watching him working away over there. It's a bit more fine on the watercress, lad, a bit more fine on the watercress. Make it, behave, treat it like it was parsley. Really give it a bit of welly with a big knife. When it's going into the sauce, you see, it'll blend in much better and make it a better color as well. When you've done the watercress and the salmon's cooked through on both sides, you lift it out carefully and put it on an attractive plate. As you can see, it's cooked, but not heavily browned. Just lay it out in a neat pattern, or you can put it in echelon, I think the technical term is, if you prefer. The last one. And into those lovely buttery juices, you put the watercress. S turn the heat up full. Squeeze of lemon juice and the double cream. Now, this is the moment when most people's nerve goes, but don't worry, the double cream's meant to be in there. It's much better in there than it is on a fruit salad. And it tastes absolutely wonderful, creamy and luscious with the firm and moist flesh of the salmon. It's one of those lovely dishes that the combinations just seem to work wonderfully with. A bit of salt and pepper. Let it come to the boil. It won't curdle, as people will tell you it will. Let it come up to the boil, and then you spoon a little bit over the salmon while you prepare yourself for the first course. Now, the first course is really crafty. You can serve the rest of that in a jug, and I have a few new potatoes that go with it. You can serve them with the salmon like this if you like, or again, serve them separately. Just give it there in another bowl. First course is a tomato juice cocktail. Celery stick for fun, 
Tabasco was to sauce, little celery salt to flavor it. Wonderful, cold, and at the end, cheeses. Easy to do, a selection of cheeses, and some of those wonderful Muscat Italian grapes that taste so good with cheese. And just at the end, almost forgot, a little cucumber salad to go with the salmon and potatoes. Mm. And now for the Christmas wine. <laughs> Okay, so now, without doubt, the most important thing about whole of Christmas, what to drink with the turkey. Maybe you like red, maybe white. We've got four wines, a range of styles, everything you might possibly want. Have a pen and paper ready. Now, the first wine that Oz will take you through is Pinot Blanc, that's from Alsace, Ritzenthaler 89, comes from Unwin 409. Yeah, this, this name Ritzenthaler, don't worry about it. I mean, it sounds German, it is a German word, but the wine is French, but it's got a slightly Germanic influence on it, and it's slightly perfumey, nice and fruity, but it is dry. So you smell that wine, and it's nice, it's got no hard edges, it's a gentle, soft, tiny bit of honey, tiny bit of creaminess about the wine, which is very, very nice. Mmm. Mmm. It's an utterly good, all-purpose white. A touch of peaches, touch of honey. The basic thing is there's a lemony acidity to keep your mouth fresh, and a soft, apple creamy thing, which will make it the perfect all-purpose Christmas white. Pinot Blanc from Alsace for right through Christmas. Okay, that's the quintessential crisp dry white. And now I've got something that's neither crisp nor um, dry particularly. This is a wonderful wine. It comes from New Zealand. Montana Chardonnay, 1989, from Safeways at 485, and also elsewhere, actually. Now, just look at this. This is just so brilliant. I can hardly get my words around what I'm going to say to you because there's so much packed into this glass. You know how it is when you go to choose a lovely ripe pineapple or something, you sniff the end to see if it's ripe. Well, this is what it's like when it is. Bags of fruit just billowing out of the glass. You've got pineapple in there, you've got mangoes, you've got all those lovely exotic fruits, but you've also got a walloping great applause of a homemade vanilla ice cream. Vanilla coming, cracking out of the glass. Marvellous stuff, you know. It's like peaches poached in wine. Have a swig. Mm. Next one, it is absolutely brilliant stuff. There's a little tiny hint of an autumn bonfire with nuts roasting on it or baked potatoes, lovely charred embers. Absolutely delicious stuff. Now on to a duo of reds. The first one, a big hefty heavyweight. Oz will take you through that one. Penfold's Kalimna Bin 28. Thresher and Wine Rack have it at £4.49. What I want to know, Jilly, is, is when homemade ice cream applauds, does it use both hands or, or just <laughs> yeah, one? I think it would end on the floor if it did. <laughs> well, look, anyway, this is a wine called um, Kalimna Shiraz. It's from South Australia, and it says it is the lighter style of Kalimna Shiraz. Well, all I can say is I'm not sure I could cope with the heavier style because <laughs> this is a blockbuster. I mean, look at it, it's absolutely opaque. I mean, you, you smell this stuff. It's going to be smelling a pig as well, I think. God. <laughs> How do you get so much smell into a glass of wine? It's absolutely sensational. It's all those kind of jammy cooked berries. You think about blackberries, blackcurrants, raspberries, all that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure I'm brave enough to drink this, Gillian. <laughs> all right, get it down here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite a wine. God, my eyes are watering. Um, and it's absolutely bursting with all those kind of really, really rich fruit flavours. The thing that comes together most is chocolate, licorice, and, and, and raspberries as well. I mean, I tell you what, actually, you could use it um, for other purposes as well at Christmas, because I went back to my dressing room and discovered that the place stank of raspberry jam. I realised I've been spitting this stuff into the sink, <coughs> so you can use it as a domestic air freshener if you want. Honestly, Aussie's habit. Don't listen to them, it's desperate. Anyway, that was the Thunderbolt. Now I'm on to something quite different. This is a Cote de Rhone. It's called Chateau Daigueville, 1988. Littlewoods have it at 3.59. Vin de Soleil, that's what they call it down there, wine of the sun. But new technology means it's not a great thunderbolt, it's marvellous, lovely, zingy, fresh, fruity stuff. Nose in the glass. Cherries, absolutely lovely cherries and raspberries. Okay, there's a tiny thud of the dirty foot in there, a nice dirty foot though, and it doesn't persevere when you have the taste. When you taste it, you've got... Mm, Cherries, you've got damson tart, you've got all those lovely fruity flavours, but you've also got a little sting of pepper, marvellous sting, only put it with food though, it's not a great party wine, it's a food wine, and great for it. <laughs> Whether there's any mention of dirty feet in this, I'm not quite sure, but it's a jolly good idea if you haven't bought that Christmas present yet for the would-be bibber, it's chilly as the taste of wine, tells you about the taste of all sorts of wines, so you don't have to waste money on ones you don't like, it's £7.99, it's available now, and here's Michael's treat for supper. <laughs> Another
another three course meal for supper, starting with an avocado dip. Stolen avocado, scoop the flesh, it needs to be really nice and ripe, into a food processor, and add a quarter of a pound of chopped onion. In the Good Food magazine, I think it says a pound, I think that may be a misprint. A tablespoon of lemon juice <coughs> and some fromage frais. That can be about two tablespoons of fromage frais. If you prefer a slightly sharper flavor, plain yogurt will do equally well. Now, you put the lid on. This makes a terrible noise, as usual. And you give it a scrunch. It's very difficult to talk over this. But... The idea is to make a smooth puree. Not totally smooth, it needs a bit of texture, which is nice. And what you then do is you pile it into a small bowl and you serve it when you're ready. It'll keep in the fridge for an hour or so with a bit of cling film or foil over the top with tortilla chips, lovely spicy tortilla chips. The contrast of the creamy, pale, avocado and the tortilla chips with a bit of chili in them and a bit of bite is just wonderful. Main course now, I'm going to do a stir fry. Turkey leftovers, about a pound of them, cut up into strips and cooking in a little sesame oil which gives a lovely nutty flavour. A bit more oil and I'm going to add the vegetables which is half a pound of onions cut finely and a red and a green pepper cut the same way and give those a good toss around so that they pick up the oil and blend their flavors. I like them really nice and crisp, the vegetables, so they don't need cooking too long, but you can cook them for up to five minutes if you like your vegetables a bit softer. The sauce is easy too. It's about half a cup of water and about two tablespoonfuls of soy sauce, a little bit of ginger, half a teaspoonful, and two teaspoonfuls or a dessert spoonful of corn flour. Give that a good stir around to mix it up and pour it in over the turkey and vegetables. It'll start to thicken because of the corn flour fairly quickly. So keep tossing it. The secret of stir frying is serious heat all the time. Right, never let it cool down too much. I'll just let that sauce thicken. What we've got to have with it is some rice cooked with peas. Now, I know Margaret isn't a great rice eater, but for this dish, rice is the perfect combination. You just add a few frozen peas to the end of rice, just as you're finishing cooking it, and the rice steams the peas, and you don't need to add extra water, so you get all the pea flavor that way. Fresh peas at this time of the year, an impossibility, really. Right, the sauce has thickened, as you can see, and has coated the turkey and peppers. You serve it out and stand by to give her a break. Pile the dish nice and high and then scatter a few slivered almonds over the top just for a bit of crunch and effect. Serve it with the rice. The first course has been in the fridge, so it's ready. And as a pudding, this, it's two different kinds of melon. I've just done two different kinds of melon in a wheel and I've put a little fig in the middle for exotic effect. But you can, if you like, just take an ordinary melon and cut quite neatly will do just as well. Now, if you have a go at this and you have some results you'd like to send us photographs of and perhaps a story or two, we'd be very glad to have them. Chris? Well, we're just about to get the tasters' verdicts on their families' cooking, but before that, the recipes and the wines from this programme are in the new January issue of the BBC Good Food magazine. This New Year edition includes a fortnight of family food put together by Michael, especially for the holiday. For non-recipe information, you can call the BBC Facts line on 0898 700 926. 0898 700 926. It'll cost you 33 pence a minute cheap rate and 44 at other times. That's for non-recipe information. And CFAX, page 616, continues to have all the programme information, including Michael's recipes. But it won't, I don't think, have Alan's recipes. <laughs> Tiffany, what did you think of their efforts? Now, on the plate, it looks appealing. The sauce has gone a bit yellowy, because well, that was our um, fault, because I was gassing at the time. Well, it, it looks lovely, but um, in fact, it was supposed to be a, a watercress sauce, 
but it's turned out of a sauce garnished with watercress. But uh, it is a slightly overwhelmed by the by the watercress. It's the taste that counts, I think. Well, I think we, we should try, try it hard, and and, yeah. uh, right. and see what the verdict is. There's John yeah. stir frying in his wok. We're going to have a look at that in a minute. It's nicely cooked through, not overcooked. That is delicious. Now, Good. the thing is, well, will this encourage you to take up cooking in a big way? Actually, this is, well, this has rather upset me. I'd hoping, I was hoping she'd find it rather awful, so she'd say that I'd do you this. You never have to get yeah, darken um, the doors of the kitchen again. But uh, obviously I'm going to have to cook beef burgers a couple more times uh, <laughs> to keep her satisfied. Birmingham will hold its breath. Margaret, the moment of truth. Oh, yeah. There it is. The stir fry has landed. What do we try think? it now. You can try it now. You'd better try it now. The nation awaits, Margaret. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like boiled rice. Fine. I, I think I've well, fried that's a personal rice. I think it's a bit a lot better fried. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's fair enough. That's a personal view. Now try the uh, the stir fry and see if you see if you like that better. The turtle. The turtle. Yes. He's given you bite-sized chunks, hasn't he? Mm -hmm. <laughs> now that's not bad. You approve? Mm -hmm. Thank you all very much. A brave effort, and before cameras, a mega brave effort. What I'd like you to do now is taste the wines that Gilly was talking about, and I'll ask you later which you like best for Christmas. Now for the finals of our Radio Times Master Cook competition. We asked you for your recipes for a Christmas pie. The prize for the best pie was this luxury 15,000-pound kitchen, and second prize is also a fitted kitchen. But, as we threatened, the five finalists would have to come to London for a cookout. So they didn't feel too isolated. We allowed them to bring a helper each. We held the cookout at Leith's School of Food and Wine in Kensington and we invited food writers Jocelyn Dimbleby and Ros Denny to judge the results with our own, our very own, Michael Barry. I'm Helena and this is my friend Mo who will be assisting me. Cookery has always been one of my main interests in life. I'm the lucky one today, he's doing the cooking. I'm from Yorkshire and I've been cooking since I was about five when I used to help me nana make the apple pies when we came home from church on Sunday. And we're from North Yorkshire and I've been cooking since I was Jessamine's age. And she's going to win. And she saw the competition in the Radio Times. Because I do most of the cooking at home, she said, come on, think of something for this Christmas pie. The thing that we chose today, we tried to choose something that would meet the tastes of all our friends that we might have around for Christmas, and also our parents who, um, to quote me dad, don't like anything untoward in their cooking. The first of the things I remember cooking were fairly inedible things called cowboy jumpers. This recipe particularly is uh, uh, from Central Europe. It's got a German, Austrian, Czech influence in it. I know the competition is going to be very, very extreme, and I can see now today it is. <laughs> Okay, everybody, two and a half hours, starting from now. Have you got some spices in the pastry? Oh. Yes, it's curry spices. Oh, yes, I, it's lovely making curry pastry, isn't it? You put the something underneath that. I thought that was the baking sheet you put just... No, I've got um, the aubergines and mushrooms and chestnuts. Those are beautifully done. And is that what you would eat at Christmas in Czechoslovakia? Goose? Turkey, goose, yeah. duck. It's going to make a very rich pie. You don't like turkey. You don't like turkey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ecstasy. <laughs> Not just with a touch here, with a bulldog clip. <laughs> yes, but we've parted company with the other oh, one. Oh, with the other one. But so I think we should be all right. Very quietly. Who's your money on at the moment? Helena, the Czech lady. Mm. Mm -hmm. I think Helena probably will taste very good. I'm fascinated by the filo pie because I think it's very enterprising. Yes, I must say, my money's on the goose for appearance, the filo possibly for taste, and maybe Sarah Beatty is a dark horse outsider. Yes, yes a really good vegetarian. Yes. It's just an hour to go now. Right, ladies and gentlemen, ten minutes and counting. Just two minutes left. Time, ladies and gentlemen, please. It's all over now. Now, was this the whole meal, complete whole this meal? This was half whole meal and half, half one. Half, mm. half, half. Oh. 
Mm. And with this mm. with the Madeira in mm. it, the special oh, you can dry. Taste the Madeira, that's mm, by you Madeira. Can. Oh, it's permeated into the um, pastry as well. You forgot the seasoning, you forgot this and that, but in the end, sorry, well, yes. it went well. We corrected a few mistakes. Yes. yes. <laughs> you see the walnuts there? That must be part yeah. of it. Yeah. And there's the goose. Did that worry you that it might have been too simple? No, I like it simple. <laughs> I, I don't think I could possibly do what some of these ladies have done here today. I, I was uh, gobsmacked, as it were. Very nice. Um, the chutney goes well Very with nice. the curry mm. pastry. Yes, I quite mm. agree. Yes. Anybody could do this. Oh, it is good. It's very curry, yes. isn't it? It's mm. quite spicy. Mm. No, Miss Hap's slight um, overlooking of the orange juice. Easily remedied, no problem. In plenty of time. Pies. Just on time. I'm going to think of it. And then all can eat off your plate. Absolutely, yes. Much of easier. Oh. Much easier. <laughs> mm. I think it's better hot than cold. Yes. Oh, it's lovely. I wouldn't mind sitting down to that on Christmas Day. Mm. No, it's very nice. Absolutely not. So we've got It'd be a, mar mar a marvelous vegetarian alternative, mm. wouldn't it? I think but it's just terrific. For, actually, for you Christmas might have vegetarian dinner. alternative, just nice for mm. Christmas dinner. Yes, mm. delicious. Lovely. Good for appearance. Good for flavour. Mm. Good for cutability. It's going to be tough to beat. Mm. Well, I think she did brilliantly. I mean, she'd probably walk away with first prize, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Aubergine, Jules to Maastricht, to Matthew, Jules to Maastricht, look out. And fresh and coriander. And mushrooms and aubergines, yeah? Mmm, that pastry is lovely. And fresh coriander. Oh, the flavours are very mm. good. Very nice. I thought it was going to be quite dry, but it's not at all, I is it? I think the sauce makes a difference, mm. doesn't it? Yes, we do need the sauce, nice hot sauce for it. Mmm. And the pastry is surprisingly successful. Mm, the pastry is... It oh, looks good. I, I know, but I don't not. think it's good. It doesn't look... Really very festive. Mm. Uh, no, but it eats well. Mm. Now, we were satisfied. It's mm -hmm. a question, really, of whether it's better than anybody else has done. The <laughs> others look, some of them Super. look very good, you mm. see. Mm. There there's are. a lot going on in this pie. Yes, and, and it's and not helped by it sliding no, around really on the marble. Away. There, well, now, can we well see enough. that? Oh, look, are those the almonds? I think so. Almonds, almonds and there's a layer of egg and then there's a layer of parsley. Now, that's very interesting, the parmesan. It's almost pure parsley. It's lovely. There's a lot of flavour going on in this, a lot of different flavours. But they, but they kill each other a bit. Mm. It is quite similar to, to those Moroccan pigeons. It's very pies. similar, but perhaps um. one or two flavours too many, do you mm. think? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you that it was a very difficult thing to judge. The food was wonderful, the ideas were great, the flavours were interesting, the techniques were smashing, especially working under this kind of pressure. I'm sorry there's got to be a result, but there is. There are three runners-up. They are Alison Tamblin, Sandra Fawcett, and Bob Hobb. Well done. <laughs> and now, in the great Miss World tradition, I'm going to do the first who came second. It's Helena Baker, helped with Maureen Burns Munro. Well done for that <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And as you may have worked out by now, Sarah Beatty and Jessamine oh, have won. Lovely. Fantastic. <laughs> Wasn't that Jessamine wonderful? And right about her mum winning, too. Now, with me is Nicholas Brett, the editor of the Radio Times, who ran the competition for us. Mm, Nicholas, yes, you've got the you, prizes. Michael. I have indeed. Sarah, well done, thank you and Jessamine. Much. There's a fitted kitchen, wonderful fitted kitchen worth 15,000 pounds in there. It's not actually in there, but you know what I mean. Well done. <laughs> thank you. And Helena. Very well done. Thank Second prize. There's a kitchen as well for you and Mo. Thank you. Well, those pies really were the business. Congratulations to Sarah for the ace of pies and indeed to all four runners-up in the final. Now, teams, the verdict on the Christmas wines at Gillian Oz wax lyrical about. Will, you start. What did you like best? Uh, well, the majority and myself voted for the Montana. The Montana Chardonnay, he right. said with confidence. John, I don't think you liked it much. The white wine, they forgot to put the grape in it. <laughs> this is a... <laughs> They put an awful lot of grape in this one. This next is the Penfolds Shiraz, yeah? Yeah, Nectar of the Gods. It's a big one. Beautiful. Absolutely. Cruelty. I'm with you on mm, that one. Brilliant. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers, brilliant. thank you very much. Why not buy them both and have a really good time? That just about wraps up the food and drink Christmas special. We hope you've enjoyed it and will enjoy Christmas too, especially the cooks among you or even those who are having the day mm. off. We'll see you again in the new year. Until then, from all of us, happy, happy Christmas. Christmas. Happy Goodbye. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas.